Hi, I'm Kindo, and this tutorial is about using MIDI from Tidal Cycles and Super Dirt to control your synthesizers. Hi, welcome to the Tidal Super Dirt MIDI tutorial. This is uh, a demonstration of how to quickly get uh, MIDI to work with the Super Dirt Quark in Tidal so that you can play notes on your synth and send control change messages to them. Uh, this is not going to be a deep dive. I just want this video to be a demonstration of how to get up and running quickly with it. There's more under the hood that I'm not going to get into like MIDI clock and some of the other specifics around um, control or, or specific types of messages you can send to Super Dirt. So just notes and control changes, and we'll leave it at that. So let's get into it. I've got a loose agenda here that I'll refer back to from time to time. And we need to start in Super Collider and get Super Dirt going. So actually, I already have Super Dirt running, just samples. And I'll demonstrate that. Or just make sure it's working here. Yep, so we've got our samples working. Uh, okay, so to initialize MIDI in Super Dirt, first uh, we just need to eval evaluate these four different lines, and each line does a different thing. This first one, which I'll eval right now, MIDI client init, will it's a super collider MIDI API call to uh, kind of initialize the, uh, the MIDI library. And in the post window, you'll see some important information about MIDI destinations. So these are two MIDI devices I have connected to my system. And these two strings in each one are important. You'll use these for the next line. So I've got my Scarlet uh, device, and that's what I have here in this next line. This uh, in Super Collider will basically initialize my device into this MIDI out object. So I will eval that. Next is latency. In my case, I don't need to adjust this. It's working fine at zero, but if you have some timing issues with your devices, you may want to add a latency here in, I think the units are seconds. I'll leave that at zero. And then last, we need to wire up this MIDI out object to to uh, title. We do that with this super dirt call, add MIDI. We need to give it a name. So our device gets a name. We're just going to name it MIDI here, and we wire it up to our device. So I'll eval that last one, and we are done. We are ready to go. So now here in title, I can simply just specify that device name that I gave, MIDI, and uh, just specified as a sound and it should start playing my synth. Before I do that, I've got a synth on that device uh, listening on channel one. Um, so that's what I'm going to play. So as soon as I start evaluating this pattern, we should hear some notes. So that's perfect. Um, so what's going on? There's some defaults going on behind the scenes. So MIDI channel, there's a MIDI chan function you can use to specify the channel of your device. So my synth is listening on channel one, but MIDI chan is zero indexed, so I need to start at zero. And it's zero by default, so if I don't specify it and my synth is on channel one, it will work. I can use a note pattern to play different notes. Uh, just like a sample pattern to, to play different samples from a sample folder, you can use the N function to play different MIDI notes. And N is centered at middle C on a keyboard. And so that's zero, it's middle C. And then the other values are uh, uh, steps 
above or below that, you can specify a negative value as well. Uh, so that is steps above or below middle C. Uh, you can also use the note name and octave syntax, which I'm not as familiar with, but uh, um, I will demonstrate it here. Uh, so you can use this, just the note name and then the octave. So that works as well. Uh, you can also use the full note function, which is, I believe, is just an alias to N. And last, you can use the MIDI note function, which is not centered at middle C. So MIDI note, uh, if I play that same pattern, uh, will start at the very bottom of the, the MIDI keyboard, and it'll play very low notes which you may not hear on your speakers, depending on, depending on your speakers. So uh, in my case, I can uh, uh, specify some higher values and that should be more audible. Um, but anyway, for this synth, I'll stick to N and uh, the pattern that was working before. Uh, to specify a volume or velocity, you use the gain function, just like you do with samples. Uh, so one is the default, which I believe is a 75% velocity. Uh, so if I uh, create a pattern here and I can increase the the velocity by 25% every other cycle, and so we should hear a uh, uh, a louder pattern every other cycle now. And so you can treat this just like any pattern in Tidal. You can, um, you know, every, I guess this won't do much, but uh, you could do things like this. Let me put some other values in here so it's a little bit more realistic. Um, So you can do things like that with uh, patterning gain. Uh, you could also use a scale and a continuous function. Uh, so if I wanted the volume to oscillate between 50% uh, and I should say 0 0.5 and one, and use a continuous function, that'll work as well. You get the idea. Uh, otherwise by default it's one. You can also change the length of notes using sustain. So this is, again, just the, uh, the same parameter as you can use with samples, but the units are in seconds, so I can specify a short note like this. And of course, I can use a pattern for that too. Okay, another thing is that my synth is polyphonic, so I can specify, or I can create chords. So let's just put a uh, different sustain there. So I can create chords. If I do uh, 0, 4, 7, this will create a major triad. And again, just like samples, um, so this is using that comma syntax to play more than one event at the same time for that, that function, in this case, the note function. And you can specify uh, patterns inside of here and get some interesting results. That is some beautiful music. Okay, so let's let's get back to a basic pattern here. Okay. Um, 
All right, so let's look at our agenda. Okay, we've talked about these two things. We've talked about how to initialize MIDI and play some notes. So let's move on to control change messages. So my synth has a, a few control changes that it'll, it'll respond to right now. Uh, the first is a filter cutoff. So I can specify a pattern. As long as I specify the, the sound here of MIDI this uh, to let SuperDirt know we're talking to a MIDI device. And then um, there's a few ways you can do it. Uh, there is a type of message called MIDI command. And if you put the value control in it, that will send a control change message. Then you need to specify the control change number and its value. So in my case, my filter cutoff is on 64. And then I need to specify a value. And I do that with a function called control. So if I want it to be at full value, it's 127. Or a minimum value is 0. So control can range from 0 to 127. So I'll specify a value of 120 at the moment. And so if I start the, the pattern, and then the control change pattern, and if I modify that, you can hear the filter cutting, uh, starting to cut the, cut the frequencies out. And of course, you can make a, a pattern of this, like so. which is cool. And you can also put uh, continuous functions in here. So if I wanted to scale this over a, a sine wave, I can do that as well. So one thing to note is that in the old Haskell title, title MIDI package, we could put control change values right in the note pattern. With the new Super, Super Dirt MIDI, we can't really do that anymore, and you need to separate your control change messages from your notes. So the reason I bring that up is because uh, right now, with a control function um, using a continuous sign function to produce its values, we're not really in, con in control of the rhythm of the control change messages. It's... Um, sending them to the synth at some interval that I'm not I'm not sure what that is. So you can use something like gain in a control change message to specify a rhythmic pattern. And gain doesn't have any effect on the control change itself, so it's kind of like a uh, kind of a workaround to specify a rhythm. So now with a gain of uh, 1 times 4, I will be sending a control change value out for each of these uh, note values. What makes this kind of interesting and valuable is you can now send control change messages separate from your notes. So if I slow down this pattern and speed up the gain, In fact, I'm just going to um, use random values. Uh, I can actually, uh, you'll, you'll be able to hear stepping in the, the filtering that's happening. So the gain is being sent out faster than the notes are playing. And so you'll be able to hear the control change happening within the sustain of a single note. Uh, that's pretty cool. So even though we have to separate the control the control change patterns from the notes, you, you gain a lot of this new flexibility with um, uh, being able to have control changes happen separately. Okay, uh, there's a shortcut to this. Instead of MIDI, MIDI command, if you leave that out, you can specify uh, CCN 
for control change number and CCV for control change value. And this will have the, the same effect. Um, you will have to leave out that uh, MIDI command, MIDI CMD. If I put that back, then CCV and CCN won't have an effect. Uh, so it's just kind of a shortcut if you leave it out. Now I can demonstrate, oops, MIDI command. So now it has no effect, but if I take it out of the pattern, then CCV and CCN will work. So that's kind of a, a shorter notation, which works a little bit better. Okay, now if you want to have multiple control change values at the same time, you'll need those in a second pattern. So on D3, I'll put a, uh, a different pattern for control change 65. So 65 I have uh, on an LFO that, that changes the pitch and the LFO rate. And so it, let me just change this to be something a little bit more sane. And so now with this uh, second L, uh, control change pattern, you can hear the LFO going. All right, and I'm just sending random values, but if I uh, change that to a sine wave, you should hear um, the LFO change more gradually. And of course I can combine that with the, the first control change pattern. So it's a little inefficient to specify the same gain and the same sound device all the time. So you can combine these two things, if you wish, into something like a stack. Um, so I will just set that up quickly here. So I can put these control changes on, on one and these on a different one. Let me get this indented so it's a little easier to see. Hopefully that's easier to read. So it, within a stack, I've got two patterns. I've got one control change on 64 and one on 65. They're both using this rhythmic gain. Let me get rid of that stuff down there. So I've now consolidated it into one pattern and we should hear both control changes with this, with these notes. So that's, that's one way to accomplish that. Uh, the, the, but the main concept being you'll need to separate your control change patterns, whether they're on different dirt connections or different items in a stack, either way will work. Okay, um, adding a second channel. So on this same device, I have a second synth that's listening on MIDI channel uh, two. So let me change this uh, filter and LFO. So they are going to back to a reset. Okay. Let's get rid of our control change. I'll just put it down here for now. Okay, so I've got a second device. So let me let you hear what that sounds like. Kind of a, a Reese bass. So what I can do with this is uh, specify a note, pattern, the device it's on with S and then I will need to specify the MIDI chan, and it's on MIDI channel two, but again, it's zero indexed in title, so I have to put a one for MIDI chan. So now I should hear notes on that second channel. Yeah, 
And of course, I can play both at the same time. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Uh, the really cool thing about this, though, is that the MIDI Chan function is patternable. So if I go back up to our original pattern here, I can make a pattern uh, for MIDI Chan. So if I want to alternate which synth is playing, I can have a pattern for which channel to play. That's kind of nuts, if you ask me. So you can, on the fly, or in a pattern, you can change the synth. Uh, but they have to be on the same device in this, in this case. OK, which leads to the next thing, which is adding a second device. So I've got a drum machine that's a different device. And so let's get that wired up. So we need to go back to Super Collider. And I'm going to copy these three important lines here. So going back to my MIDI destinations that were printed out, I'm going to copy the exact values that were printed out for my uh, drum machine, an electron analog rhythm. And I will paste that value in. And I need to give it a new device name, a new variable name. So I'll just call it rhythm. I'll eval that. Then I need to set the, the latency. In my case, I'll just leave it at zero. And then last, I need to uh, wire up the device to a device name in title. So I'll just give it a name of rhythm to use in title. And we're done. I've now added a second device into SuperDirt. So now back in title, I can uh, specify my other device and then uh, give it a note pattern. Now in my case, my drum machine listens at the lowest end of the keyboard. So I'm going to use a MIDI note pattern. And MIDI note zero is the bass drum. So I should hear a bass drum note come out of this. And it works. Uh, one is a snare drum. And a three is a clap. And a two is a uh, rim shot. You get the idea. And of course, you can play these all together. So that's how you can use multiple devices in, in Super Collider. Um, now, one thing I tried yesterday was uh, putting the device names in a pattern, but I, I couldn't get it to work. One synth wouldn't play. So you're welcome to give that a shot on your own. But when I when I tried that, uh, it it didn't produce any results. And in my case right now, I've got kind of a mismatch of um, notes centered at middle C and also at the bottom of the keyboard. So I'm not going to get into trying to get this to work in an example, but uh, you're welcome to give it a shot on your devices. Um, so that's everything I wanted to show. You should be able to get your synths running with all of that. So uh, a few final remarks, though. If you don't want to reference this video and want to uh, copy the super dirt startup code to get your MIDI device working. If you go out to github.com and search for the super dirt repository, come to or uh, find this music informatic super dirt repository, go into the scripts folder and then look for this title MIDI SCD file. And all of the code that I'm showing you is uh, right here. So you can use the same code and you can refer to it here. Uh, if you're interested in getting under the hood, you can go into the uh, SuperDirt classes and take a look at what's going on. I'm not going to get into that today. 
The last thing I want to show is the version of title. So I am using 0.9.10. I believe this new MIDI stuff will work on 0.9.9, .9, but I recommend 0.9.10 just to make sure. And make sure you've got the latest Super Dirt Quark. You can do that in, uh, by going to the Quarks option here in the language menu in Super Collider and go to the Super Dirt Quark and just make sure that you've got the latest version. Uh, if you need help with upgrading and, and that sort of thing, uh, feel free to ask a question in the comments and we can get you sorted out. All right, so that's everything I wanted to show. Hopefully this will get you on the road to making MIDI patterns with your synths. So. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy, and I'll talk to you in the future.